Hey everybody, welcome back to the Daily ECG here. My name is Reed. Go ahead and download that PDF in the description so that you can follow along with this exact format. And click that like and subscribe button if you enjoy this channel. Let's jump into it. So first thing I like to do when I look at ECGs is look at the forest and the trees of the forest or my QRS. So I just like to get an idea of what's going on. Let's say I'll zoom in on this V1 lead strip. And what I'll see is I've got this these QRSs that are kind of marching along here. And then I've got this kind of quicker rate here and then I got a little bit of a gap and then I've got this beat and then I've got this kind of funky beat here. Kind of come back to that later. And then it comes back to this really irregular beat. I got a short, bong, longer, shorter, midway, shorter. So we would say that this is an irregular rhythm. This is very irregular. Is there any pattern to the irregularity? I would say no, right? It kind of gets longer and then just randomly shorter, really short and then really long again. And so um, right there, I'm thinking, is this AFib? And so let's just go ahead and evaluate what our atrial activity is doing with this narrow complex rhythm here. And I look for atrial activity and I see this baseline. I don't see any organized, you know, pure P waves per se, but I do see some baseline kind of fibrillatory. Sometimes it looks like it's getting organized with these little notches here, but it's really not. And you can see it kind of flattens out and then it gets a little bit more coarse. And so in the setting of an irregular rhythm that really has no pattern to the irregularity, so we would call that irregularly irregular. We've got a narrow complex QRS associated with it, which means that conduction through the ventricles is probably through the AV node and down the normal Hisperkinji system, the highway system that allows for rapid QRS conduction. So because of that, what is this rhythm? I'm gonna say that this is atrial fibrillation. Right, and it's really irregular because the atria are fibrillating and this AV node is a bystander and it's conducting signal down kind of randomly. It really depends on the health of the AV node and how fast it's going. And we need to define this ventricular response. And we say that we can determine ventricular response from AFib can be, AFib can be a slow ventricular response, a moderate ventricular response, and a rapid ventricular response. There are surely portions of this that are responding rapidly here with rates that are right around 150 beats per minute if you look at this little strip here, but then it slows down to say 300, 150, 175, 60, 50 beats per minute with these longer conductions. And so I would say somewhere, I would even just categorize intermittently moderate to rapid ventricular response. So an AFib with a moderate to rapid ventricular response. And so now we need to keep going and look at our QRS. We said our QRS is narrow. And if I look down here at maybe lead two, I do have a narrow QRS that is less than 120 milliseconds. My QRS axis is up in lead one. It's isoelectric in AVF. So that tells me it's parallel with AVF, but the setting that it's up with one meaning it's going to the left. So AVF is here, kind of this vertical lead. And so if it's perpendicular to that, my ECG axis is going to be towards lead one. And so that's a normal axis, a little bit left forward, but that's okay. And let's see, I have good R wave progression throughout the precordium as I scan through my leads. And so that's my QRS evaluation. My QT interval appears to be okay. If I look down here in lead two, you can see here's my R to R interval. I look at the midway point and I see that the T wave ends at that before then. So that's a normal QT. And so the last thing I like to look for is pathological Q waves, which I don't see. And ST changes throughout. I don't see any ST or T wave abnormalities that are scary for ischemic changes. What I am going to do though is I'm going to now kind of come back to this funky beat that we starred right here and see what's going on. And so is this a premature ventricular contraction? Is this an aberrantly conducted beat for our AFib? And so what I'm going to look for is a certain type of morphology with this beat. And what you'll notice here is I'll scan upwards here to V1 where we see that same beat here. We've got this type of morphology in lead one where we've got this RSR prime, RSR prime morphology for this funky looking beat, right? We're trying to determine is it a P, 
VC versus um, a aberrant conduction. And so I've got this RSR prime, and I've also got something called long short. And long short is a phenomenon that occurs when you've got this long interval here. And then immediately after it, you have this short interval before the next beat. And that short interval beat can conduct aberrantly. And so we call this long short a phenomenon where we get a functional, we get a functional right bundle branch block. And that's because of this long short phenomenon. Why is that? Well, when you have this long, R to R interval here, like we just said, this long R to R. Remember that the QT interval or the repolarization of cardiac cells will actually get longer with the slower the rate is. And so what ends up happening is when you have a fast beat, a beat that occurs just after, it can conduct with a functional bundle branch block. And because we have this RSR prime, it's actually in a right bundle branch block morphology because for a split second, when that beat comes down, when the AV node conducts rapidly, here's our fibrillatory waves, we get conduction. The right bundle branch block hasn't repolarized yet, and so it's functionally blocked, and we get left bundle branch activation, and then we get a functional right bundle branch block for just this one beat. Another way you can phrase this is this is Ashman phenomenon. And that's just named after the guy who figured out what was going on. So this is a functional right bundle branch block or Ashman's phenomenon or long short. And so what is our final diagnosis here? Put it all together. We've got atrial fibrillation with a moderate to rapid ventricular response. We've got, if you want to do the rate, I'm not going to do it here. What you can do, what I like to do, is for the rate, you can kind of average six seconds or so, count how many beats there are, and multiply it by um, uh, 10, because there's 10 of those in a minute, and so you can get the beats per minute. We're not going to do that today, but we're just going to call it a moderate to rapid ventricular response. We've got a functional right bundle branch block for this one beat, and that's our rhythm. So hope this helps, and... Uh, if you have any questions, throw them in the comments. If not, have a great day. See you tomorrow.